Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another scratch tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of coding something from scratch, I will show you how to add extra features to an already existing tutorial series. Specifically, we will be adding a camera Y axis and looking up and down to Griff Patch's 3D Raycaster series. Quick note before we start, in order to follow this tutorial, you will need to be completely up to date with Griff Patch's 3D Raycaster series. If you are not, there will be an iCard with a link to the playlist for the series. Ready? Let's get started. First off, let's add the camera Y axis. First, make a new variable for all sprites called camera Y. Click into the player sprite and add a set camera Y to zero into the when flag clicked scripts. Next, inside of the pen sprite, find the draw row custom block and find the set y block just above the go to xy. Drop in a 0.8 minus camera y divided by 20 into the 0.8. Now if we show the camera y variable and turn it into a slider, we can see that our camera y axis is now working. But wait, there is a problem. If we adjust the camera y variable to be a high number, we get some weird glitches behind walls. This is because of the way our engine works, as walls don't exist in 3D space behind other walls. We can see that if we move the camera while the camera Y is still high, walls appear and disappear when they become blocked or unblocked by other walls. There's unfortunately no easy fix for this, but you can avoid this glitch by just not letting the camera Y go too high. Up next on our list of things to implement is jumping. This is pretty easy to do. Just click into the player sprite and make a new variable for this sprite only called Y speed. Underneath the tick player block, change it by negative one. Then change camera Y by Y speed. Also, make sure to reset the Y speed underneath the when flag clicked block. Next, we want to prevent the player from clipping into the ground. Grab a if block and place it under the change camera y. If camera y is less than 0, then set camera y and y speed to 0. Inside of the previous if statement, place a new if statement which we will use for jumping. Put a key space pressed block into it and set Y speed to any number you'd like. I personally like how 6 feels. As we can see, when we jump, the walls now also move up and down. If we walk over to one of our collectibles and jump, we can see that it isn't reacting like the walls to us when we jump. This can be easily fixed by copying the set Y variable block from the draw row script and inserting it just before the set xy block in the stamp entity custom block. All we need to do is change the 0.8 to just 0 and set xy to also go to the variable y. Now before we add looking up and down to the game, I would like to discuss how most 3D Raycaster games handle x-axis aiming. If you want, you can just skip to the timestamp on screen and skip the explanation. So first of all, it is not easily possible for you to make a perfect x-axis aiming in a Raycaster game. This is because in the real world and in most modern 3D games, when you look up, things that were previously parallel to each other start to converge towards one another. However, in a Raycaster, everything has to be drawn in columns, and these have to remain parallel to the y-axis. And due to this, most Raycaster games start to look kinda weird when you look too far up or too far down. So the way we are going to handle this is by using the same effect as the camera y axis, but with a couple of differences. First, we will be reversing which direction the columns are moved in, and also we will offset them so they still remain somewhat in the middle of the screen. Make a new variable for all sprites called camera exter. We already have a variable called camera direction, so to not confuse ourselves, let's rename camera direction to camera wider. Underneath the tick player block, 
change camera exeter by key up arrow pressed minus key down arrow pressed. Next, inside of the pen sprite, find the set Y variable underneath the draw row custom block and swap out the camera Y variable for a camera Y plus camera exeter. Now if we try looking up or down, we see that we are getting the camera Y effect, which is what we wanted, but we actually need to reverse the controls. Go into the player sprite and swap around the key up arrow and the key down arrow. Next, we need to create the offset. In the pen sprite, locate the go to x, y under the draw row custom block. Change the y variable to y minus camera x multiplied by negative 25. The negative 25 is just the value that I find works best, but feel free to mess around with it. Next, copy the y minus camera x times negative 25 and place it into the set y block further down the script as well as into the go to x y in the stamp entity script we can now look up and down but something is off the horizon is not following us when we look up and down this is because the horizon is part of the background and the background can't be moved we can't just make the horizon a sprite because sprites always go in front of anything drawn using the pen extension. So we need to stamp the horizon. Go into your backdrop and copy and delete just the horizon and paste it into a new costume in our pen sprite. Place it before any of our previous costumes. This will cause all of our costumes to be shifted around. This can be fixed by adding a one to the type value in the stamp entity custom block. Insert a change costume to star or any small costume in between the set pen size and stamp blocks. Hey, I'm uh, editor Kirby here. I uh, I know I said that uh, to insert the switch costume in between the set pen size and uh, stamp block. I meant the set set pen size and, uh, let me just check what it is. The set pen size and the set pen color to block. Uh, the, yeah, just remember that, fix that. Beneath it, add a set size to 100, and after that, change costume to whatever your horizon is called. And here I also meant, uh, or well, I didn't mean, but uh, I never mentioned it, that you need to put a stamp block after the switch backdrop to Horizon. Finally, place a clear graphical effects beneath it. Now we need to properly position our Horizon. Place a go to x, y block underneath the clear effects. Set x to 0 and set y to 0 minus camera x dir times negative 28. Now the horizon follows our camera, but sometimes the horizon becomes clipped. This can be fixed by adding a square of the lighter color beneath the gradient in our costume. However, the horizon can still be clipped so let's limit how far the player can look. Click into the player sprite and underneath our change camera exeter, we will put two if statements. One checking for camera exeter being greater than 10. And setting it back to 10. And another, checking for camera exeter being lower than negative 15. And setting it to negative 15.
Our camera X direction is now fully operational. All we need to do is reset it underneath the when flag clicked block. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, I would greatly appreciate it if you shared the video or even leave a like. Make sure to comment any suggestions for a future tutorial video or for features to add to the next episode. I've already added fully functioning multiple floors with different layouts, so be ready for that. Anyways, till next time, bye bye